Today's project is a freely edged fruits bowl. In this video, I'm going to make a freely edged fruits bowl. In the previous video, I made a large noodle bowl with a spiral markings. In this one, I'm using a similar technique. I'm not going to trim the main part of the body. I want to keep the marks left by my hands. So I need to throw the body thin enough to keep this concept. I use 2kg buff stoneware clay on a full-size throwing bat. I'm making a cone shape to equalize the density of the clay. Moving the clay up and down makes the particles align well and makes throwing easier. This is a large amount of clay for me, so I repeat this action until I feel comfortable with it. Both my arms are heavily anchored on the wheel tray. This is a key point at this stage. If your wheel is set lower than mine, use your size instead of the wheel tray. I'm using the edge of my right hand to center the clay. My left index and middle fingers are compressing the top edge to prevent a mushroom shape. I tuck my left elbow in to gain extra steadiness. This is the final stage of the centering. I want to keep the top and the side flat. I'm cleaning the surface before the next stage. This clears my mind. I'm measuring the size of the base with my hands. I need it to be 15 cm for this bowl. I'm making a center hole with my right middle finger. My left hand is assisting so my middle finger can concentrate on navigation. When I reach the point where the bottom thickness is roughly one centimeter thick, I start to pull my right fingers outward. Then I slowly pull my fingers tips up to bring the clay up also. I repeat the process again. This time the hole is larger so I can use three fingers. When my fingers are on top, I need to press the clay back to the main part without trapping air in it. It is almost there. I can use both hands now to gain more control. I'm going to do the first pull. This is always a light pull to feel the thickness of the wall. I'm compressing the bottom with a wooden spatula to prevent an s crack. The second stretch. My right ring finger is pushing the bottom of the clay firmly. Then from that position, the right hand goes slowly straight up to the top. Both my thumbs are interlocked, so each hand knows where the other one is. When I come to the top, I stay there for a while to compress the edge. Now I'll repeat the same action. My right middle finger and an index finger are tightly attached to the ring finger. 
My left index finger is outside of the wall to push the top inwards. In this stretch, I'm concentrating on making the wall thinner and an even thickness. Now I use a wooden tool outside to compress and stretch the wall at the same time. I'm compressing the edge from three directions to make it stronger. This is the final upward stretch. I want to leave a gentle hand thrown mark. I'm cutting the edge randomly with a wire bow to make a freely limb. I make the guide for the string to cut before I open the ball rim. My favorite tool, Gyu Bella. I can control the shape better using this, as it has a long side line, so I can hold my arm very tight to my body. When I use a short wooden tool, for example, I have to release my arm from my body to reach the inside of the ball. This long edge also makes a natural line, and at the end it has a nice curve to make the internal round bottom. I'm going to open the ball rim a little bit more as it will close slightly in the drying process. My left hand is supporting the wall from the outside behind the scene. I use a chamois leather to compress the edge, but this time I want to make a freely rim, so I need to be careful not to overdo it. After the ball becomes leather hard, it's time for the trimming. I'm checking the bottom thickness. Then I measure the internal bottom size. This relates to deciding the foot ring size. I want to make a foot ring slightly smaller than the internal bottom size. In this case, about one centimeter. This is up to personal preference. Everybody's aesthetic sense is different. My decision is always based on practicality and my visual aesthetic combined. I wet the butt slightly so the piece of clay can stick well. I make sure to push the clay down first, then gently stick the ball. I make a small center hole for my finger rest. Now I'm marking the foot ring using my hand size, which is 9 cm. I'm using a saw form to trim the bottom clay.
I trim the outside of the foot ring straight down. Then I trim the curve to make a more natural line. I'm trimming the inside of the foot ring. Then I trim circles and after I trim the peaks. I repeat the same process until the bottom clay's resistance is soft when I push with my finger. The outside of the foot ring is slightly higher than the inside, which means I still have a margin to trim. This is the final stage. I polish the bottom and foot ring to make them stronger. The final check of thickness. Just a couple of centimeters outside of the foot ring is a point which often has too much clay. Thank you.